Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We're going to get into everything you need to know as an investor in AMC stock starting off this trading week. This trading week is going to be insane because on one hand, we're going to be getting the reverse split actually happening, at least maybe, question mark there. Uh, we'll talk about it here in this video. But you're also going to get some pretty important catalyst for the broader markets that if this trend continues could be very bullish for AMC itself. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section and let them fly as we're heading into such an important week. I want your feedback down below in the comment section. What do you guys think about uh, this conversion? It, it, do you think it's going to be blocked? That, that could be something that is a possibility this week. So as we talked about in the last video, um, this investor, Rose Izzo, uh, went to the Supreme Court in Delaware to basically try to get this reverse split halted because Ape should get the settlement as well as AMC. And I know this is um, one of those kind of frustrating moments for some people. Like, why would Ape get the settlement as well, even though they're the ones that is really benefiting from this as, as far as the actual share price itself increasing. And I would agree with that, quite frustrating, but legally speaking, this does make some sense. So that's why I I, I, I don't know if it's going to halt the conversion that's set for this upcoming Wednesday, but it's a very real possibility that it could. So do go ahead and keep that in mind. Now, if things go as planned, if we do get the reverse split coming on Thursday, on August 24th, well, what does that mean, okay? This means that if AMC stock uh, closes Wednesday, where it currently is at $4.03 per share, they're going to do a 1 for 10 reverse split. So in theory... You should open trading Thursday at $40 per share, and you should have 10 times less uh, shares as you do currently have, but the price of the shares should be 10 times higher. Now, this in and of itself means nothing. It changes nothing with the value. It just condenses ownership, basically, of, of AMC. Instead of having a bunch of shares that are small, small, small pieces of AMC, you have less shares that are larger pieces of AMC. That's the um, more, I guess, logical way to think about it. Now, in terms of the share price and how that trades, it does change a little bit there because instead of having 530 million shares outstanding, you're going to have 50 million shares outstanding, roughly. And that is a lot smaller. So kind of like GME, right? GME did what it did in 2021 because the float was so small so when you get all of this outsized buying activity on a float that's i believe around 50 million uh is the same as as gme it could be wrong there it could be like 80 million shares around there a pretty small float then you get that buying pressure coming in that can cause the stock to make very big moves um on an actual percentage basis because that same million dollars heading into amc um, with a smaller float is going to do more than what that million dollars would do if AMC had a massive amount of shares outstanding. Now, th that's that's important to, to note, but it does also have the adverse effect, and that is that if hedge funds and institutions were bearish on AMC at $4, well, there's the stock can only go to zero. So if, if you short the stock AMC... At four dollars, it can only go to zero, right? If AMC stock is forty dollars, well, the stock can drop more dollars before it gets to zero. So it's it's the same thing essentially. If you were a hedge fund that was shorting, you know, a uh, hundred shares of AMC at four dollars per share, well, now to get that same exposure, you would only have to short ten shares of AMC at forty dollars. So it doesn't change much there. But it, it does in a way, right? That's why a lot of reverse splits, the stock will actually fall after a reverse split. And this goes for just any stock because of that that concept that there is more dollars now that, that, that you could make 
shorting the stock. So hopefully that does make some sense to you. It doesn't have to be that way. Now, in the case of AMC, you've actually seen the short interest kind of increase um, recently after this 35% drop. Now, I think that is very flawed um, just way of looking at AMC, AMC for hedge funds and institutions. And I think it, that obviously doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, I think all of the hedge funds and institutions that are a part of this arbitrage trade, at least, um, have the same idea, and that is cover after the reverse split. Now, they're not going to want to start a short squeeze by covering it <laughs> after the reverse split, but if they do start to cover, and we do get some, some buyers coming in, from maybe publicity, maybe it's it's whatever else it is um, that causes people to come in and buy AMC. That could turn the situation a lot more uh, bullish. Now, one thing that I think is important to point out that is unquantifiable, we have no kind of knowledge on how this will affect AMC, but it's the publicity. Um, a certain aspect of getting short squeezes or seeing a stock just do well um, and and squeeze is publicity. So if a random stock, just random stock out there, starts to increase, well, it's not going to do what GME did in 2021 unless you have publicity, unless it's being talked about. So whenever there's a major action, with AMC or really any short squeeze trade in general, it does tend to get more publicity. It does tend to get talked about more. Now, when people see AMC at $40 per share, that could drive more people to want to trade AMC. Um, because even just when you think about the simple fact of retail investors, if basically everyone knows about AMC, GME, meme stocks in 2021 but a lot of people have not paid attention to those said stocks over the past couple of years now and when the stock is now 40 dollars even though it doesn't really change anything from four dollars it's just the reverse split uh, that could cause more attention and more buying pressure into amc again this is something that's not quantifiable we can't measure this we have no way of measuring this but it is something that could have a very significant impact to AMC. Now, something else that you really need to know as well is on Friday, we've seen some pretty bullish things happen. So we've seen um, 144,000 calls expire in the money. And a lot of puts went out of the money as well, especially at that $4 strike. Now, how options work is um, there's usually a 2 two-day settlement delay so in in theory nobody would have to actually uh, buy shares or sell shares around this four dollar um, strike on the call side and the put side for around two days so that's where the settlement actually happens that's where the actual buying or selling occurs is around two days so either Monday or Tuesday that's where you could see a lot of this bullish effect from what we've seen on Friday. And what we've seen on Friday was 120,000 calls at the $4 strike that did expire in the money, which you were only in the money by about three cents. So it was pretty close. It was pretty uncertain if this was actually going to be the case or not. But indeed, we did close above $4 per share in after hours because after hours does count um, on the expiration day. A, a, a lot of people don't understand that, but after hours does count. So important to note there. But the $4 put as well, uh, you have 204,000 uh, contracts that were at the $4 put. Those obviously expired out of the money as well. Now, the put's a little bit more interesting because on the put side, what causes the buying pressure if a put goes from into the money out of the money on any given week? It's market makers because people that bought the puts, right, they bought the puts well, they just lost all of their money. That's it. Simple as that. Well, what the market makers had to do when these puts were in the money, and especially when AMC was down in the low threes, market makers had to go out and short stock around 
you know, four dollars, five cents, four dollars, ten cents, uh, anything above four dollars. Because if if they short a stock, right? Um, at call it, you know, four dollars, um, and then you have the right to sell it or or buy it at four dollars. Essentially, it's like shorting AMC, but the opposite. So what that, what that means, I know it sounds confusing when you try to think about these things backwards, but long story short, what that means is mark makers can buy back all of those hedges now and they don't want to be uh, short on AMC for a long time. That's not what the mark makers want to do. They want to be very liquid. So best way to think about this is mark makers had to add a lot of shorts for this $4 strike, $4 put, that's 204000 for open interest mark makers they're not using options to hedge they're using actual shorted shares that don't have expiration dates so even though last expiration was august 18th on friday well mark makers likely still holding a lot of the shorts over this weekend so starting on monday on tuesday mark makers will start to buy those um shares back and get rid of those short positions that's going to be a lot of buying pressure i believe the start of the trading week uh, tomorrow. So that could also have a big effect on um, on AMC stock. Um, now, if we do go ahead and take a look at the FTD numbers, this is another continuing story that is a wild one, kind of just crazy, shouldn't be happening. But the FTD numbers are, again, going higher after this reverse split actually uh, was approved from the courts, bottoming out at about 6.8 million, back up to 7.7 .7 million. And we're going to get a couple more weeks of data as well at some point here in the near term future. Um, could be the beginning of this upcoming week, could be the end of this upcoming week, but we're going to get more of these numbers coming out. And we want to see if another spike does occur or if this continues higher. But on Monday, you're going to have 9.8 nine almost 10 million FTDs that come due the day after that about 12 million the day after that 11.1 million about 12 million the day after that and 12 million again on Friday so uh millions and millions of FTDs that do need to be covered covered on and uh that is also something that I would say has been having a positive effect already on AMC but will likely continue to have a positive effect on AMC now, let's talk about the option expiration for this upcoming week as well. You got calls in the money at 106,000, calls out the money 243,000, puts in the money at 121,000, puts out the money at 476,000. So a decent amount of option activity. Again, we're probably going to see a lot of buyers of, of options coming on and uh, actually buying this upcoming week. I, I, I don't think it's going to be a dull week at all at all as far as options if you do take a look at the option chain as far as the call side you got almost 40,000 calls at the 450 strike you have 68,000 calls at the four dollar strike so some very um, large numbers here you got 84,000 contracts that are held at the five dollar strike 20,000 at the six dollar uh, 20,000 at the 550 and at the $6 strike, you have about 18000 So you have a massive amount of open interest that is held just outside the money and barely in the money with that one strike at $4. Even the 350 call has 31000 for open interest. So some very large numbers here. Now, on the put side as well, at the 450 put, you got 31000 for open interest. 22,000 at the $5 strike and then 5,000 at the 550 and at the $6 strike you have a uh, 13,000. So you do have a lot of potential dry powder that you know if AMC does make a move higher it could get real bad for hedge funds very very quickly. So keep all of this in mind. Now if we take a look at the Ortex data you have 28.22% short interest of free float. Uh, 145.72 million shares that are currently sold short. Uh, cost to bar average, 950%. Cost to bar max, 1,060%. Cost to bar minimum, 8.6%. Interactive Brokers has 879% cost to borrow fees currently. If 
we take a look, you have a short score of 92, about 600 million worth of short positions in AMC currently. A big disparity again still between the estimated short interest of free float and the free flow out on loan. The estimated short interest of free float is at 28.34%. Free flow out on loan is almost 41%. Shares on loan, 211 million. Days to cover, 7.35. Cost to borrow, 313.25%. And 84.6% uh, utilization. So you do have uh, very squeezable numbers here. I think the real question is how, how do things pan out with the conversion? And then after that, now if we convert on Thursday, that means we're going to have Thursday and Friday this, this week to actually um see the effects of this so the end of this week could actually be very exciting as well as the beginning not just with the option activity but you actually get the reverse split and you're, you'll actually see how we start trading thursday and friday and that's where more buyers could step in and that's where you could see a lot more of that volatile price action especially considering the float is going to be a lot smaller now i think a big reason why amc stock did sell off 35 and a half percent um, back here on August 14th, and it was worse at one point. You see the low of $3.18 per share. AMC stock closed at $3.39. So at one point, you were down like 45% for the day. It was rough. I think this was pricing in a lot of dilution of AMC shares, and I don't think that's necessarily going to happen. And I think that has been a reason for some of this clawback recently is because when you take into consideration um, the reverse split itself, well, you're just converting the two equities. It, it doesn't have to be a huge negative. If you think about all of the dilution AMC could possibly do, that's really negative, right? That would be really negative for AMC share price. Is AMC going to do all that dilution at least right away? Probably not. They're probably going to try to dilute when the share price is going higher. At least that is like simple, you know, raising capital 101. You don't want to raise capital when your business valuation is in the toilet hole. You want to raise capital when your val when your business valuation is higher. I think that's pretty simple to understand. So um, was a big overreaction. Now you're actually seeing that reaction to the upside. And I think it could get a little bit more aggressive from here, especially considering shorts are you know still holding amc stock at the highest levels that they have ever held it at the short interest has never been higher than where it has been recently and i think that ultimately you know all shorts must cover that's that's like all gaps must be filled all shorts must cover so that's going to do it for this video check out the next video that we're going to be going over as well here pretty soon about a price prediction what i think could actually happen with amc stock and talk about some of the other aspects that could affect amc as well that video will be coming out roughly at about 4 p.m eastern standard time so looking forward to that hopefully you are as well as we start this crazy trading week hit the like button subscribe to the channel and source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section you guys have a great rest of your day and i will see you in the next one